Quebec, cradle of Canada's civilization, dominates the St. Lawrence, that of Gibraltar. And amid the swift transitions of history, this is still old France in America. The war moats of the ancient citadel extend for two miles around the provincial capital. They are a relic of the days when all of Quebec was one of the world's greatest fortified outposts. Here is La Porte Saint-Louis, one of the ancient gates piercing the old fortifications of Walled City in North America. Today it looks down upon the old and the new. Still French in atmosphere with its venerable spires and quaint streets, its customs and language. The city consists of an upper and lower town, the two connected by steeply graded streets. And invariably, two languages warn of traffic rules, so you can't plead ignorance. But you might believe you are in Paris when you glance at the street signs. The headquarters of the French General Montcalm still stands, and from here he went forth to that final battle in which he fell. A granite shaft does honor to him. The Marquis de Montcalm could not hold Quebec against the British General Wolfe, but his heroic stand won this tribute from his conquerors. But Quebec does not live in the past. In contrast to its old world atmospheres, it offers the most modern of business sections. The residential areas are not unlike its southerly neighbor. Motorists from the states swarm into this province during the summer months for sightseeing, for fishing, and many intent upon a pilgrimage to a famous shrine where miracles have occurred, astounding even the skeptics. A commemorative chapel is built of the stones of the first church erected here. And the famous Basilica of Saint Anne de Beaupre stands on the site of a little shrine built in her honor by some 17th century sailors. The first miracle occurred in 1658 when a crippled farmer was suddenly cured as he placed three little stones in the foundation. Today, a special ramp is needed for the wheelchairs of the pilgrims. They come from all over the North American continent and even from overseas, thousands of sincere believers to pray for the help of Saint Anne de Beaupre and to be strengthened by Orleans, centered in the St. Lawrence. In the days of shame, the first settlers began the cultivation of its rich soil and they worked the land for three centuries. Berries flourish here, and half of Canada knows the delights of the island's luscious fruit which ripens for an entire month in midsummer. Old customs are not lightly discarded here. Mmm, mmm, this bread certainly looks good. Back on the mainland again, and past the falls of the Montmorency River, higher than Niagara, the weekend traffic out of Quebec leads to Lake St. Joseph, where the water warms to a far more enter in midsummer months than that of the St. Lawrence. Here are clean, sandy beaches and sheltered waters where swimming is excellent. The smooth surface of the lake is just right for a fast motorboat to tow the rider on water skis at thrilling speed. The gentle summer wind is sometimes too gentle for a race, but sailors are optimistic. They wait and hope. The Citadel of Quebec is the gateway to a variety of picturesque areas in the province, which many prefer to reach by boat. Down the St. Lawrence, through regions of rugged beauty, the steamer approaches the well-known resort of Murray Bay. On the north bank is the Manor Richelieu, popular with vacationists. The golfers can tee off right in front of the hotel and just need to avoid a slice into the river far below. And of course, if the ball lands here, the unfortunate duffer will have quite a job playing it back onto the fairway. The pool is a hazard, but only for the golfers. The broad St. Lawrence flowing northward is the water route to the picturesque Saguenay River Canyon. And again, the deck of the steamer is the best vantage point.
The boat is approaching a famous shrine high on the towering crest of the Palisades. It is the statue of the Virgin placed where early French traders bartered with the Indians and missionaries converted them, erecting the first shrine on this spot in the 17th century. And so the river has its story to tell and its rugged beauty to disclose. But the historic Gaspe Peninsula, settled over 400 years ago, has an old world atmosphere as well as the invigorating tang of sea air. For this is a fishing country. Offshore in the cold depths of the North Atlantic, a trawler's nets are vital tools of the trade, and they are constantly being repaired so that a fat haul of cod or haddock won't slip through a hole. Ready for sea, and for anything the sea may offer, good or bad, a trawler gets underway. And here's a kind of fishing that attracts sportsmen to the lakes and streams of Quebec. Now is the crucial moment. Light tackle is under a terrific strain. The net is under him, careful. And there he is, safely snatched from the water and a beauty of it out. Five pounds of trout is the limit for one day and, well, this looks like it. Imagine how they will taste with the subtle flavor of wood smoke. Descendants of the once ferocious Huron Indians still roam the wilderness, earning their living by trapping. And this is typical of Quebec province, civilization primeval forests side by side. Looks like an excellent red fox pelt there, and another that could be a silver tip. Hurons of today, after 400 years of civilization's influence, hold to their customs, their traditional ceremonies. On the Gaspe Peninsula, this memorial does honor to Jacques Cartier, who discovered this land in 1534. So much of it still unspoiled by its of historic...